Okay, so today I'm going to talk about if it's okay to eat sugar if you are skinny. And I think you know my answer to that, but I'm going to explain why as well. So somehow many people think that it's okay to eat sugar as long as you don't get fat or as long as you don't have any problems with your teeth. Because those are the two main things that we think about generally, we uh, think about when we're talking about consuming too much sugar. And this is where I'm going absolutely bananas when someone like NHS comes to us and says that it's okay to eat this amount of sugar in your diet on a daily basis. It's not okay. It's not okay at all. So I even read this thing. I, I, I don't even know where it comes from, but someone had posted this long post and explained that it's, we shouldn't be afraid of sugar and sugar should be, we should be able to have sugar as part of a healthy diet or as long as we don't eat more than 1200 calories worth of sugar per day, we are okay. Now, I'm assuming that this person meant carbohydrates included in sugar there. But I'm fearing that they might not have meant starches, because that's usually where people um, make that decision, um, where they starch sugar. They think that's different things. They are the same thing. It just takes a little bit longer for the starch to get into your bloodstream. But that would be about 300 grams of sugars or carbohydrates, whichever you choose to look at. And that is quite a lot. And we're trying to talk about a balanced diet and all those kind of things. But who decides what a balanced diet is? I think we got this completely wrong. We are not evolved to eat a balanced diet the way that we are eating a balanced diet today. So we have to kind of question whether that is actually a balanced diet or not. Anyway, whether you feel okay and you are thin or not doesn't really matter. No one, no one should ever eat sugar just because they're skinny or for any other reason. Sugar is not essential in our diet. No one will get anything good out of sugar. And I was trying to think about when sugar could be a good thing. And the only thing I could come up with was a diabetic type 1 diabetes. I'm talking about type 1. It's a big difference between type 1 and type 2. So a type 1 diabetic who is about to go into a coma because of low blood sugar. In that case, a very, very small amount of sugar could be beneficial. But I'm talking about a few grams to get this person back to consciousness. But we need to remember that a type 1 diabetic has an autoimmune disorder which has destroyed their pancreas totally. They can't produce any insulin. So they're all in control. The way they're controlling their blood sugars is with insulin injections, and that is not always very accurate. So when I say no one needs sugar, I'm not counting for the people that are ill or needs as a, a medical thing. So let's have a look at something that the medical profession calls TOFI, so T-O-F-I, that's thin on the outside and fat on the inside, or skinny fat if you like. That's what I would refer to. So if you take a bunch of skinny people, one in four are going to be skinny fat, which means that they have a lot of fat covering the organs, which includes your heart. So it's going to be harder for your heart to pump. Is You're going to increase your blood pressure doing this. You're going to have fat around your intestines. You're going to have fat around um, your liver, and that will give you a fatty liver, and so on, which was when I grew up, the only people that have fatty livers were alcoholics because they were drinking so much and they were putting too much pressure on the liver and that's not really the case anymore. I don't even think alcoholics are in the top anymore of who actually gets fatty liver. So it's all these TOFI people, all these skinny fat people, including fat people as well, of course. But 
when we can't see the fat as in subcutaneous fat, when it's not on the outside, we think that we are healthy. We think that person it must be healthy. So when I'm walking around in town and I see all these thin people, I might not think anything about it. I have had lots of friends or ex-boyfriends as well who have been extremely skinny and they can eat just whatever they want. And I've always been thinking it will catch up with you. And it absolutely will. These people haven't necessarily always been skinny fat for all I know, but there are many other health complications um, that they can get down the line from eating too much sugar or other crap food. And unfortunately, because they are thin, they will think that they can get away with this forever, pretty much. I'm not getting fat, so it's not a problem. I think the awareness is slightly elevated nowadays, compared to like 20 years ago. But I still think we have this mentality that, yeah, it's all right, I can eat some sugar because I'm not getting fat. At the same time as you kind of know that it's probably not good for me, but at least I'm not fat. And then you just continue doing it. So what I want to tell you is that actually this type of fat that you get that is not visible is much, much worse health-wise than the subcutaneous fat, the, the muffin top or the love handles, if you like. That's not very dangerous. You can have an amount of that as long as you don't have the buildup around your organs and you will actually be quite fine health-wise. It's not necessarily unhealthy. So it kind of depends a little bit about how much you have of each of those a tiny bit of organ fat is probably not going to kill you, but a huge amount of subcutaneous fat might still not be healthy. But generally, they go hand in hand. As that increases, the sub, um, the um, the organ fat will also increase. So if you take a tofu person or a skinny fat person and you have a look at their blood panel, what you will find is that they have incle increased triglycerides they have usually they also have blood sugars in the range of a diabetic person so they when you're checking them they are pre, very often pre-diabetic or could actually be diagnosed as type 2 diabetics and they often have very high blood pressure because of the um, the um, the pressure that they put on the organs so if you have a heart that is covered in fat and if you have blood vessels that are covered in fat, they're not going to be as elastic and things are not going to flow through them very well. So the heart is going to have to pump much, much harder. And at the same time, you have the fat covering them almost like a steel pipe around them. It's not giving as much. So to get the blood going, you need to pump harder and therefore your blood pressure will increase and so on. So there are lots of things going on there which are not good. So... Just an interesting fact that you might not be aware of is that thin people with type 2 diabetes are at much, much higher risk of death than fat people with type 2 diabetes. I'm not entirely sure about the cause of this, but my gut feeling tells me that it is their eating habits. Because, as I said, when you think that, well, I'm not fat at least, you will keep eating crap, where someone who's fat has both the, the obesity to deal with and they're thinking about their diabetes. And also, I think that the type 2 diabetics that are aware that are type 2 diabetics that are thin have probably been diagnosed much, much later in, or much further into the, the um, diabetes that they have than people who are fat because they're usually catching it fairly early because People are aware of it, so the doctor will ask to do tests to see whether they are at risk and so on. Whereas if you see a thin person, I have, well, once I think, but I have never walked into my doctor and they've been like, oh, we should probably check your blood sugars because I'm not fat. So they wouldn't necessarily go there. But people who are fat, they go to their doctor. They want to check their health and they want to check everything. So they will do everything to try and prevent this. But imagine that 25% of the people that they are not checking are actually at 
having these problems. So they're missing all these people because you're not checking it. So if you're thinking you're thin and you're wondering, oh, whoa, wonder if I have this, the things that you could have a look at is your belly. So it's very hard to obviously see organ fat and it depends on how much you have. But if you always look a little bit bloated, but it's not much, it's, it's more hard than soft and it's kind of protruding a little bit, then you probably have some issues with organ fats, unless you're truly bloated. So you might be eating wheat, but you are sensitive to that. So you will be very bloated or whatever. So that could be one thing. The other thing is that it's very easy to check your blood pressure. You can probably do it at the pharmacy if you don't have the equipment. Um, if it is above normal range, then you probably want to go and have that checked. And um, also you can actually buy these finger prick things that diabetics have just to check your blood sugars. You can test your fasting blood sugar, whether that is in a normal range or not. And then after you've been eating, how long is it elevated and how long is it elevated for? And then obviously you can go to your doctor and you can ask for a blood lipid panel to be tested to see if you have high triglycerides or not. Um, a little note on that, if you are losing weight, your body is in fat burning mode and it will release a lot of triglycerides while you're doing that. And they, your body releases them to use them for energy. So if you are losing weight actively, you will have elevated triglycerides, but it will not be a problem because it's not because you're eating and so on. Um, often you have, I don't really like talking about cholesterol. It's not even cholesterol, but it's HDL and LDL. Then they call that good and bad cholesterol. What we can say is that high HDL in general is good for you and low LDL is good for you. Now, if you have LDL through the roof, which is the bad cholesterol, and you have low HDL, that you can see that as a warning signal. But what you want to do is lower your inflammation, because if that is the only thing that is bad, it's probably not going to be a huge problem for you, unless you have a genetic defect. Then it can actually be a problem, because then there's no way for you to get them down pretty much, and you need to be on constant medication and so on. But that's very few people. So that was skinny fat. Um, in addition to this, thin people do get the cardiovascular disease. They get cancer, they get autoimmune disorders, they get stroke, they get type 2 diabetes, they get type 1 diabetes. They get all of these conditions just as much as the fat people. So we want to think a little bit about what, what the cause of this is, and that is inflammation. Whatever you do, you do not want to have chronic inflammation because that promotes all of these diseases. Pretty much all um, modern disease, diseases that we have, the, the things that we're dying from today, are caused by chronic inflammation. So it doesn't matter what you look on on the outside, you might have a lot of inflammation going on on the inside. So whether you're fat, whether you're skinny, doesn't really matter. And if you have anything like a normal or semi-normal immune system, it will react and it will be active and you will have inflammation. If you are on an immunosuppressing drug, you will suppress the inflammation and therefore uh, prevent this. But then your immune system isn't very good and that isn't obviously isn't very good in itself if you want to stay healthy long term. So I think people always want to argue with me and negotiate with me about what types of food they can get away with eating and how much or how little they can do. And they want to be eating crap food in moderation and they want me to okay it and say, yes, you will be fine. It's fine. But I won't say that because it's not true. So usually the younger the person is, the more they seem to be able to get away with because we haven't really destroyed our endocrine system yet and everything is working despite us putting a lot of crap in. And usually the older people get, the more they are willing to listen to advice and the more improvements they are also going to see from changing their diets because they have more to improve on. 
But I do want, if you are young and you don't have any problems and you are skinny and you're not even skinny fat, I still want to encourage you to not eat sugar and processed foods because in the long run, what you're doing, you're just feeding this inflammation and you, you're basically a ticking time bomb. You, you're just perpetuating the problem and it will show up down the road just not this year maybe or next year or maybe not the ten, next 10 years but at some point it will show up in some form so what I want to say is that people are often very very attached to sugar and flour so even the people that are older sometimes old is worse because we have been eating these things for our whole lives and we really love these foods no matter what's going on and we're so emotionally attached to them that we don't want to believe that they could potentially be that bad surely it must be okay to eat them in moderation and that will be okay but it won't so you obviously in charge of yourself you can make your own decisions whether you want to eat these things or not that's totally up to you but don't fool yourself and think that you can have these things and still be healthy i do not believe that you can eat these things and be healthy if you have grown up on a very very good diet and you stuck to that diet and you have a little bit of sugar and a little bit of flour every now and then I'm sure you can be healthy, but show me that person. I don't think we have any of these people in our society, and that is the problem, that we can't just have a little bit every now and then and still be healthy. We can fix ourselves. We can go on a journey. We can get really healthy and then reintroduce it, maybe, and have a little bit every now and then, but I'm not talking about every now and then every day. I'm talking about... A special occasion here and there and that's probably going to be fine however every time you do it you are going to abuse your body in some sort of form so it's not the best thing to do health wise but it might be a trade-off that you're willing to make so that's obviously your decision and um, everyone will have to make their own decisions so just like the three big things that I would encourage you to do is one, cut out all flour from your diet, and that includes wheat flour, even if it's whole wheat, it is any type of grain flour. Um, actually, also include the nut flours in that because that's not good. They're probably oxidized and so on. That's ne not ideal. And then cut out all sugar, like all sugar. We're talking about fruit juices, dried fruit, um, look at the sauces and condiments that you're buying you don't want the sugar in there it's just totally unnecessary and obviously table sugar we're talking about fruit we're talking about actually even milk contains a lot of sugar so if you're having a splash of milk in your coffee maybe not a huge deal but if you're drinking a lot of milk you might want to have a look at that um it is crazy i have a friend a, a very good friend of mine um who has just um not being diagnosed but she probably has cancer that's um now we're just waiting to find out whether it's uh has spread or whether it's actually removable and i told her please 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 stop eating sugar she's a, a vegetarian but she eats fish so that's not the diet that i personally would promote but she said mm, but i love sugar and i said yeah but do you love your life do you want to be healthy and then she was think she she went quiet for a bit and then she said but raisins are not sugar right and i was like she she's just trying to fool herself because she knows better she knows much better she's very intelligent and she's also a dietitian many years back although she's not been working with she's um she's a trained dietitian shall we say she knows these things she's very intelligent but she doesn't want to do it and I said, it's fine, you know, you do what you want, it's your life, but you cannot get away with eating raisins. Raisins are full of sugar. If you need to have some sugar, obviously a fruit would be better, 
than a handful of raisins. It's less sugar than a handful of raisins, but it's all sugar. So just, you know, do your research. Don't think that dried fruit isn't sugar or fruit isn't sugar, fruit juice, or even vegetable juice is sugar because you're processing it so finely that you're extracting the sugars into the juice and then you drink it. So if you ate the raw vegetables, you might not be able to digest much of that at all whatsoever. But when you're juicing it, you're just getting it all out and it's very accessible for you and you're drinking liquid sugar, basically. And then the third thing is vegetable oils. Vegetable oils are horrible. They are very often oxidized. If they're not oxidized, which they are pretty much to some degree, they will become oxidized very quickly. And especially when you're cooking with them or, you know, you're not consuming it straight away but also even if they wouldn't be oxidized when you're consuming them they're floating around in your body and they can get oxidized inside your body so they don't need to be oxidized before you consume them for them to be bad okay so we don't want to do any any vegetable oils whatsoever i have two exceptions there that is uh, coconut oil is fine and then we have olive oil if you know that it is extra virgin olive oil cold pressed no problems you can have a little bit of that on a salad or something but don't go overboard with it because in the end of the day there are lots of oils in there that will easily oxidize as well so if you can get rid of flour sugar and vegetable oils i can pretty much ensure you that you will be able to reverse your skinny fat syndrome it is as easy as that Will you be completely healthy just doing that? Possibly not. There are a lot of things that you could probably improve in your diet. But getting rid of those three will get you to a pretty good place. So that is a very, very good start. And I think that everyone will benefit from doing that. So please do that. It's not They're not foods. They're just food substitutes. They are made because we like the taste of them. But really, they're not providing anything in terms of nutrition or barely energy, I would say, but bad energy, not the kind of energy that we actually want. So my answer to this question, is it okay to eat sugar if I am skinny, is no, it's never, ever okay to eat sugar, even if you're skinny. Obviously, it's your choice, but just know that sooner or later we'll come back and bite you in the ass, basically. Chronic inflammation is not to play with. It's awful. It can lead to so many illnesses and not all of them are the kind that you will die from. But imagine just walking around with constant joint pain, for example, just so that you can eat sugar and flour. Is it worth it? I think, you know, for me, it's a no brainer. It's absolutely not worth it. But when we are addicted to these foods, we feel like we don't have a choice. Like, we we can't really focus on oh well it's just joint pain i can live with that but i can't live with the uncomfortableness of not having those foods and it's really really messed up it's really crazy in our heads so you know if you're having this problem i i encourage you to watch some of my earlier videos and actually deal with your cravings so that you can quit these things because it's not you're not going to feel well and I don't think it's worth it. I don't, I don't see why anyone would want to be in physical pain just to feed their addiction to certain types of foods. So sometimes people can turn this around just by having this knowledge. Most of the time, it will take a little bit more. So as I said, go and watch some of my previous videos if you want some tips on how to quit. That's all good. But just know that the th three things that you want to get rid of sugar, flour, and vegetable oils. And if you can do that, then once you are on that sort of diet and you're fine with that, then you can start tinkering a little bit more and just get more and more healthy every time and that will be fine. So uh, that was all I had for today. And um, if you have any questions, please ask them right now. Otherwise, I'm going to close this down. So it's awesome to see that the uh, you're appreciating my videos. I'm, I'm really happy when, when you are getting back to me and you tell me that this was really useful. I have implemented this in my life and now I'm finally in control of these cravings. 
that's so bloody awesome so give me more of that when you have been watching things and you actually use them and you feel like you're getting some kind of results just let me know i think that's uh, that's what makes it worth it for me anyway and um, i'm going to post this on youtube as well so if you are watching this on youtube please subscribe to the channel and just help it grow so that we can reach more people and hopefully we could turn things around and we could actually lessen the demand for sugar and flour and increase the demand for real food which might be able to bring down the prices so that's the journey i'm on so thank you so much for watching and take care bye